This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by the Dragon's Shirt, which poses the most important reply to any statement or observation. What about dragons? This is my house. Ah, but what about dragons? Oh, so you want me to marry you? But what about dragons? Will you please pass the salt? But what about dragons? Dragons have feelings too, people. We cannot forget the dragons. Available on Teespring. Link in the description. Shadowverses. Greetings. I am Shad. And I like to be understood. But to achieve that goal it means I have to take into account the uh, definitions of the words I use that other people have separate to my own. You see, the purpose of language is to transfer information accurately from one person to another. Therefore, the words we use are actually just a means to an end to achieve that higher purpose. This is very interesting when you combine this concept, the purpose of language, with history. And you might not think it is, but it's actually far more involved than I really realized oh, years ago. I've grown to understand that this is important stuff. Why? Well, historians love to name things, and we historical enthusiasts love things about history, so therefore we need to know the names of the things we love about history to be able to accurately refer to them and speak about them for one to another. As an extension to this, historians and historical enthusiasts, because I don't really consider myself a historian, I'm an enthusiast, but we hate misinformation, especially about the things that we're interested in. So my, you know, area of interest is of course the medieval period. But what on earth do I even mean when I say medieval? Because there, like as I have found in my own study, there is a bit of a disconnect between an academic definition of the term medieval and a commonly understood you know, definition of medieval by the regular person. And this is exactly the point of this whole video. Because not only just with medieval, the terms knight, viking, and many names of swords, and many other things as well, their definitions have started to change in regards to the commonly understood vernacular compared to the specific historical definitions. You see, the issue are words that have specific meanings in the more commonly understood use, but a different meaning historically. Consider the word Trojan. Nowadays, this word is used to mean a type of computer virus, but historically it meant a citizen from the ancient city of Troy. The different definitions don't cause too much confusion, as they're so different it's easy for people to know the difference. It would be pretty darn hard for a person to think that computer viruses could exist in the classical period. But what about different definitions of certain historical words that are still very similar to their original meaning, but different? Such as the word Viking. In common language, most people use the word Viking to refer to the Scandinavian people of the early Middle Ages. And they use the word in the context of referring to these people, such as the Viking people, he was a Viking farmer, and some have even said, like, and this is a Viking child. But historically and more accurately, the word Viking was used to refer to a person from Scandinavia who went on a Viking, which meant a raid. Viking means raider from Scandinavian lands of the early Middle Ages. And a person from those lands who didn't go on these raids was not a Viking. Well, I propose this question. What makes one more accurate to use in language than the other, a commonly understood term versus a historical definition. One option is to always use the more historically accurate definition of the word as many people assume this is what historians already do. No. So many terms are actually, ba historical terms, are based off of words that are used in common language because they're easy to be understood. So if you think the historically defined terms are pure, no, incorrect. Perfect example, rapier. Everyone thinks of this sword when we say rapier, but this sword more uh, in the English language was more often called longsword. Yeah, <laughs> longsword is a term that wasn't as uh, prominently used in the English language in the period, the actual period where this sword was used, to refer to what we call a longsword. But in Germany, they had the Langschwert, which translates to longsword, so they kind of called it a longsword. If we translate, we can call it a longsword. But in English, this sword was either called a bastard sword or a two-handed sword, oftentimes or just sword, but the names of swords change completely. 
but the, the word longsword in English was actually sometimes, it wasn't very prevalent, used to refer to a rapier, and the term rapier in English was used to refer to what we would call a side sword. Other completely anachronistic terms accepted and used by historians are heater shield, kite shield, longsword, and many words we have stolen from other languages because there was never a historical English word to identify that object. Perfect example, and this is one of my favourite words in the world, and warning for those who are wearing your headphones, turn down your volume, MASHICULATIONS! So if you think we must use proper historical terms, and that historians and historical enthusiasts only use correct historical terms, that's completely incorrect. We, there are so many names for things that we have adopted purely because that's what common language is. And this is my point, because it achieves the purpose of language, and that is to be understood. When I say rapier, because the, the name rapier has been redefined in modern language to refer to a certain type of sword, I can be confident that the people I'm talking to will understand the type of sword when I say this name. And so my point is we already do this in the historical community. But then we can get really bent out of shape when someone uses a term that we don't consider correct. Now this comes from I think a, a noble place where we hate misinformation and we want truth, okay? But we then take it a step further because we don't understand the use of language, while well, sometimes we just miss it. You see, if the new term that we don't really use is achieving the purpose of language, well that is perfectly fine if it doesn't convey any misinformation. Now if it does, that's when I think, no, 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 wait, that's meaning something rather incorrect. A classic example, the term broadsword, okay? Uh, Historians and historical enthusiasts, uh, especially in the sword enthusiast kind of community, so I've made a whole video on this and I'm not the only one. Matt Easton has, and I think Scalagrim has also done it, and Metatron I think as well. I, just, I can't remember the video, so I might be wrong. But we've all said the broadsword is not a the right name for an arming sword. I have said that as well, okay? But my opinions can change. As I take in new information and reconsider things, I have found, for myself, I, I do feel it's a bit hypocritical to say you can't call an arming sword a broadsword. Now, why? Well, we, we say you shouldn't call an arming sword a broadsword because historically, uh, this type of sword was called a broadsword. But this is the issue. Language evolves. And if we historical enthusiasts don't evolve with the language, we end up creating issues and overcomplicating the situation. What do I mean by this? The term broadsword has already been adopted into the common vernacular. Uh, there's nothing we can do about it. It has been promoted in movies, TV shows, even documentaries like a TV series Conquest and stuff like that. And so, so many people understand what, and this is the thing, if you hear someone who isn't really up to date on sword say broadsword, you already kind of know what they mean. Whether we like it or not, broadsword has been redefined in common language. And we acknowledge this, even if reluctantly, even if, say, we don't even know that we have acknowledged it. How? Well, whenever we refer to the sword that's supposed to be called broadsword, we don't just call it broadsword anymore. To be understood, and because we know most people when we hear us, they're probably going to be thinking of arming sword when we say broadsword, we add a prefix to it and we say, well, this is a Scottish basket-hilted broadsword or a basket-hilted broadsword, already defining a difference between a broadsword and a basket-hilted broadsword, so people know we're referring to a basket-hilted sword because most people, when they hear broadsword, will think medieval arming sword. So we have adopted this word whether we like it or not. Uh, even myself, I, I need to refer to the Scottish basket-hilted broadsword as a basket-hilted broadsword for the achieve the purpose of language, which is to be understood by the most amount of people that I can. There's nothing wrong with telling people that it's a non-historical term. That's fine. That's why I'll keep my, you know, broadsword video up. But in the same sense, uh, I think, and this is funny, what I'm about to say next, there, there's this historical enthusiast Puritan side in me that, that still doesn't like it, right? But I do feel there's actually nothing wrong with calling an arming sword a medieval broadsword. Because uh, if that's a new term, that language has evolved, and it's not really conveying any direct misinformation. The sword is broader than other types of sword. It is a medieval sword. And so in terms of just the meaning of the words used, 
it's fine. But my Puritan side, I pro like, I don't think I will use the term, but perhaps I will not correct other people uh, and say you shouldn't use the term, but I will certainly educate people about what was more commonly called a broadsword historically, as I will teach people what was actually called a rapier and a longsword historically, because we love history when we love to know these things. But in terms of the words you should use in common language, I think it's a bit elitist of me to say, you're not allowed to call it a medieval broadsword. I've done it in the past, but now I've changed my opinion. And language redefined terms all the time. The word faggot didn't mean what the word faggot means now. And it's like, oh, shared language. No, it meant a bundle of sticks originally. That word is even used in that context in the original Lord of the Rings books. They call, oh, we'll just get that faggot and, you know, use it uh, for firewood. But the context and meaning of that word has changed drastically. And, oh gee, I can, I can just throw out countless examples. The word quell meant to kill, and that was it. But now it's evolved to mean to just quiet or lessen something. It can also be used in the context to kill, but originally that's all that it meant. But then we come to names and terms that actually convey misinformation. And that's when I think we historical enthusiasts have a right to get on our high horses and say, hang on a second, that, that's not a good term for their name. Like how the words ninja and viking are used. Everyone uses the word ninja to describe a warrior that the historical use never did, because ninjas were never inherently warriors, and this is where the misinformation of this redefining arises and why it should be corrected. Similar to this, the modern use of the word Viking, that Viking is a name for Scandinavian people of the early Middle Ages, implies that every Scandinavian of that period was a warrior. The word Viking means a warrior, and if their culture is the Viking culture, with Viking farmers and Viking people, they must be warriors too. Warrior blacksmiths, warrior bakers, and warrior children. No, the word Viking should not be misused like this because of the misinformation it conveys. But in contrast to this, there are words that you could call things that are more historically accurate, just like only referring to a Viking as what would be considered a Viking in that historical period. But because of the more modern understanding of these words have changed, calling this thing according to its more historically accurate name can convey far more misinformation than than if you were to use the modern and inaccurate attribution. So this doesn't apply to the word Viking as I've mentioned because the modern definition and use of the word Viking conveys so much mis misinformation, but consider this. Saying the broadsword was used by the Scottish Jacobites is a perfectly historically accurate sentence, but it will tell most people that the Scottish Jacobites used a medieval arming sword because that's what most people understand the word broadsword to mean. And this is, of course, incorrect. The Scottish Jacobites used basket-hilted swords, and interestingly, these swords were also called claymore in certain instances historically. But the word claymore is never used to refer to a single-handed sword. So calling it a claymore in modern language would convey more misinformation, even though that would be more historically accurate. This is a clear instance where using the historically accurate words, the very words the Scots used to refer to their own swords in that period, spreads far more misinformation than using the incorrect but more widely understood definitions. This mindset, as I've explained to you, to be happy and even maybe a bit more inclined to, uh, uh, you know, evolve to using the definitions of names as it's, they're more commonly understood and used in language, it has rubbed some people the, lo the wrong way because I've already started to explain this in some videos already, specifically how I look at the terms medieval and knight. Specifically, there are two videos that I did. When was the medieval period and did the knight exist before the medieval period? And in both of those videos, I, I talk about you know, the, the thing people think of or understand when you say the word knight or the word medieval. A disconnect has evolved in language between the historical definitions of those terms and the commonly understood way that this, uh, you know, these terms are used in language. From my own observation, medieval is rarely used to refer to anything outside the periods between 1000 and 1500. And this is interesting because the, uh, the original definition of the word medieval 
medieval means middle period, which is synonymous to Middle Ages. And the Middle Ages was called the Middle Ages because it was between the Classical period and the Renaissance. But just like Broadsword, we have very little power to try and change the way the, the language as a whole in the world uh, are starting to use these terms. We can try or we can embrace it because we already do with so many words already. Take the word awful, okay? Uh, it's funny, the original true kind of, you know, meaning translation of this word was to be full of awe. Or, f or full, okay? But now it has evolved to mean the exact opposite. Do we demand people use this word according to its strict proper definition and translation? No, because it's language. And this is where we come to medieval. Yes, medieval translates to specifically mean the middle period, but that's not how people use that word anymore. They use it to refer to the time periods in which I refer to, and I think we should embrace that. It will help us be more understood by people when we refer to medieval things. And there's nothing wrong with using a definition for medieval to mean something different to Middle Ages. You could say perhaps the Middle Ages was what the original timelines were, the years 500 to 1500s, but then say the medieval specifically within the Middle Ages was the periods of five, sorry, 1000 to 1500. I don't think there's an issue with that, and that's how I would like to adopt it because it would make me better understood by people as a whole. When you say medieval castle, medieval sword, medieval anything, people aren't thinking for, you know, any periods before then, right? You've never heard the term medieval Viking used? I I've never heard that term, and it sounds, you know, kind of odd, even though, like, by exactness, what the older definition of the word meant, that would be correct. But again, People don't use that word that way anymore. And if you think this use of the word medieval is incorrect because its literal translation means something different, then why don't you use that with all the other words that have different literal translations to their meanings, like the word awful. So I think we uh, it can be difficult, like, like with broadsword, we just need to take down our uh, kind of... what well, It might be a bit too harsh to say elitism because... We, we love this period and so we want the correct things to be used. But like I said, when no misinformation is being conveyed by new evolutions of terms and definitions, there's nothing wrong in adopting them. In fact, we gain something out of it, like I mentioned before. What we gain is being e more easily understood by people that we talk to about these subjects. Because, as I said at the very beginning of this video, the word itself doesn't matter. It's being understood that matters. So we could call something a snore flat or a dingle hopper, but if, and if people understood what we mean when we say that, the word achieves the purpose of language and it's perfectly fine because even, you know, the even strict historical, more accurate terms end up being inaccurate because they weren't called those things in the periods in which these things were used. Rapier, bastard sword, long sword, even the terms knights sometimes used in different contexts as well. So what are some words you know of, as specifically names of things in the medieval period that mean something completely different uh, in the period in which they were used compared to the use of those words now? There are hundreds of them, so please share them in the comments below just to kind of hit this point home even more. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope it's given some food for thought. And of course, I hope to see you again. And until that time, farewell.